Hi, so this is going to be just a short tutorial on creating a simple saving and loading script in Unity using C Sharp. So I have a little base scene set up here. I've just got a press play. So it's just got a counter which I click. This number increases by one each time, and I've got a little text box that I can type in anything. If I press enter, it gets saved as a string to a list. So I type in things in and then do print it'll come up in the console there and these are both stored in here the number is just a static int and the list of strings is a static list it will become apparent soon why they're both static I also have these two buttons say save and load and at the moment they don't do anything but eventually they will be saving and loading the game so if I press play again and leave and then open it up again you can see the counter is completely reset if I try and print there's nothing nothing to print because the list is emptied so obviously this isn't ideal if you're making a longer game and you need some things to persist between play sessions which is why the saving and loading comes in handy so what I'm gonna do is make two new scripts first one we called game and that's going to have everything that will be saved in it and then the second one will be called save load and this one has the actual functionality of the saving and loading so if we just open game up first this is the simplest one so we should be able to run through this quite quickly so first thing we need to do is take out this mono behavior bit uh, make sure to re put the open curly brackets in because mono behavior it can't be saved so that can't be included in the in the script that we want to save and we need to add the line up here in square brackets system dot serializable and that just tells unity basically that this can be saved here we don't need either of those all we're going to be doing in this is just declaring a few variables so first we want a int and we call that number to save and that will be the number on the counter and then up here we need to add using system dot collections dot generic so that we're able to save the list that we have so we want to add public list and it's a list of strings and we'll call that strings to save strings and then that's actually that script done so now we can move on to the more complicated one and that's the save load script so again in this we can take out update and start they are unnecessary and we'll also be taking out mono behavior again and one thing we will be doing is we'll be making this static class because we need to be able to access it from anywhere so we're also adding a few things to the top such as system.io and system.runtime.serialization formatters.binary and then in here we're going to need two functions one which we'll call save and one that we'll call load and again both of these need to be static so that they can be accessed from anywhere so first in our save script we need to tell it that we will be needing uh, an instance of the game script that we just made and we'll call that save game and that's what will be being saved in this so firstly we want to make a binary formatter so that we can write files that we need to write so then if we do file stream call that file make that file.create so we're making a new file here 
we need to tell it where it needs to go. So we're putting it in application dot persistent data bar, which I'll show you where that is later, in case you need to find it on the actual computer. Uh, and then you want to add on the end, and this can be anything at all. This is what the file will be called. So I'll call it saved game. And then as well, the file extension can be absolutely anything you want. I'll just do dot save. So now that we've made our new file, we need to tell it what's going in there. So save game dot strings to save. That's the first thing we want to save is the list of strings. And that will be set to button controller dot strings which is the, the list in the button controller. And then again, save game dot number to save equals button controller number. So that's then the int that the counter is counting up because we'll also be saving that. So then bf, which is our binary formatter, dot serialize. And what the stream is the file that we made earlier. And then we're saving save game which is the instance of game that we declared at the top and then we close the file because we're done with it and then we'll just put a little debug.log game saved just so we can test make sure it's working properly so then we'll go to button controller and make a new function and call it save game so we want a variable of type game and we'll call that game to save. And that's a new game. And then underneath that we will go save load dot save. And we will tell it to use the game that we've just made. And I will need to set up the save button. So on click we want button controller to save game. I count that up and then save. I'm getting our little log here saying that the game has saved. So before you go any further with this, with saving any games, you'll need to go to project settings, player, and then set your company name and product name. So my company name is set to Team Twist and the product name is set to tutorial because this will set where the uh, in the save load the application.persistent data path is and also I've remembered you need to put a slash before the saved game so otherwise it will save in the wrong folder so now if I go here to show you how to reach this if you type percent app data percent into the top of your file explorer and then go back to app data to local low and then the company name so again team twist product name tutorial and this is where the saves will end up so if I quickly do another save then I'll do a save game saved back to the folder and there you can see saved game save has appeared in here so now all we need to do is set up loading so back to our save load script in the load function we will need a string, and that's called game to load. And here we'll want to test that the file that we're trying to load actually exists first. So file.exists, which is a handy function, game to load. So in here again, we want a new binary formatter, and we'll call that bf again. It's a new binary formatter. And then same as before again, file screen, call that file. But instead of file.create, we're going file.open and that will be game to load. And then file mode.open. So then we'll make a new variable of type game and call it loaded game. And we'll set that to the game that we've just got from that file. So we do bf.deserialize file and that will set this game that we've just created to the game that we just got from the save file. 
and then we're done with that one so we do file close again and then after that we want to set things in our button controller script to the things that we just loaded from the file so button controller dot strings equals loaded game dot strings to save and then button controller dot number equals loaded game dot number to save so these like in your game script these can be replaced with absolutely anything anything that can be serialized so you don't need just ints or lists you can have just strings by themselves you can have floats pretty much any kind of variable can be serialized there are a few exceptions but on the whole you should be all right saving most things so back in here we'll have another debug just saying that the game has loaded so we know that this is being run so now like we did before we want to go to the button controller script and make a public void called load game and then in here we want a new string and we'll call that game to load again and that will be exactly the same as what you put as the name of the file up here including the data path so if you just paste that in there and then if you do save load dot load put game to load in there so it sends the variable we just declared so back in unity if we set up our load button now so we want to drag in the button controller set it to load game and just as an added way to make sure it's all working properly uh, after this we will set the number text to the number again so we can make sure that it's loaded properly straight away so now we'll press play count the number up a few put some names in the list and then save the game is saved we can now exit play mode this would be the same as closing the executable if you'd made a build and then when we reopen next time if we do load game the counter goes to what it was if I print the list I get my list of names from before so that's how simple it is to make a saving and loading script as an example of how to add more functionality to it if I say duplicate my counter and the button and then go into my button controller script I can add public static uh, say float for example and we'll call that number two and we'll make that start off with zero and then if we copy and paste our number increase call this number two increase and number two say plus equals 1.6 instead just to show that it works with the float as well uh, and then we'll also want to duplicate the text so we can see it updating with all that num2 text and make num2 text equals num2 dot to string and then all we need to do is add that to our game script so if we add a float and call it number2 to save and then in our save load script make sure we add it here as well so save game dot number two to save equals button controller dot number two and then also load it button controller dot number two equals load game dot number two to save and we'll just add this same functionality in the load game as well so it updates straight away so number two text equals number two back in unity we'll just need to change this second button to do number two increase instead of just number increase and then in button controller we'll just need to add our number two text which is down here and then if we press play it should update yeah in decimals this will update normally some things in here and save exit play mode re-enter play mode load the game counters reset to what they were and if we print the list, we get a nice list there. But yeah, really simple to add any more things you need to save in. You 
you can add things like transforms if you want to save the position of a player, save things like level in the same way as uh, the int that I've got in the button controller. So that's all, so make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on Twitter and Facebook, links in the description.